Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Ajna Lens. This is our Ajna XR station. This is a one of its kind physical VR training simulator, which uh, wherein we are combining both the best of the physical aspect as well as the digital aspect in terms of training. So what happens is when you are trained on in a classroom style, uh, you know, kind of an environment or whether you are trained on a e-learning sort of an uh, medium, the training we feel is like still inefficient. And to go to the next step, we need to blend the, the biggest possibilities of the physical and the digital world that we have created today. So presenting, this is a VR simulator. It, it consists of a PC. Uh, and of course, since it's a VR simulator, these are the VR glasses that we have. This is a PC VR based glasses. Uh, the name is Ajna Light 2 and these glasses are uh, essentially very small in form factor as you can see. It weighs around 153 grams and it is the like the smallest one of the smallest uh, you know VR glasses that are available today and these are completely made in India. We have this uh, different tools that are used in the industry. So for instance, we are currently training people on welding and spray painting as a trade. So as you can see, these are like three different welding guns that we have. And we have two different spray painting guns. One is airless and one is air spray painting gun. So we can, uh, you know, experience the air spray uh, module today. So this is a physical air spray gun that is being tracked with a track there is a tracker mounted on it uh, this tracker tracks the movement of this spray gun in real time also the reason why we are using uh, pc vr is because we want to provide the very high graphic uh, vr experience and that's why there is a very uh, powerful cpu unit with like a lot of uh, graphic power is there so i'll just close this trolley is also very protective and it is super organized so that the it has an ample amount of space to to put every uh, all the components inside. I'll just turn on the tracker here so that it can track the movement of the air spray gun. All right. Since I'm wearing glasses, we also have this uh, feature in our VR headset wherein you can adjust the num the number that you have. So I'll just uh, change it to the number that I have. I have like plus one uh, in my right eye and 1.5 in my left. So I'll just change it to that and wear the glasses. Great. So uh, this is the home screen of the app. And as I've mentioned, there are two kinds of spray painting, uh, spray painting guns that are available in the market as a standard practice. Uh, let's pick the spray gun uh, because we have picked the spray gun right here. There are two modes available. In the first one, it's called Dexterity Training, wherein students learn how to, uh, you know, spray paint using an air spray gun. And then there is a second module, which is Industrial Use Case, wherein students are teleported uh, to an actual job site, actual workshop, wherein they paint on, uh, let's say, in case of automotive, they paint on the real doors and the bonnet of the car. In case of automotive, they, uh, you know, this spray paint on the wings of an airplane and stuff like that. So let's go to dexterity training. So in the dexterity training, especially with respect to spray painting, there are five different parameters on which the trainees are being trained. Uh, there is trigger, speed, distance, angle, and overlap. So let's go to the first one, trigger. There are different levels in each of this training. In level one, you are given simple options of checkerboard, metal, sheet and plain board. In level two, you get this, uh, you get a little more complex uh, objects, which is like cube, sphere, prism, pyramid. And in level three, you get actual uh, objects on which the paint is to be done, like trunk, there is excavator bucket, there is runway guider in this case. So because I'm a novice, let's start with level one. I'll select checkerboard here, super simple, baby steps. 
after selecting that i need to select any of the color so let me select the red as i come here you can see that there is uh, there are this red arrows and red markers all over the uh, all over my gun because i am not holding it correctly so this circle suggests uh, the angle at which i need to keep my gun this arrow towards the back suggests that uh, is it like do i need to take this gun closer to the object to the on which i'm uh, painting or not so for instance uh, let's let's solve the angle first so now this is the correct angle at which i'm holding if i turn it down it will give me an error so same way let's say okay now this is fine but now there is a red mark uh, because i am keeping it too close to the object so i need to take it a little backwards now this is the correct position and uh, this green mark on the trigger because this is a training for trigger it indicates that now this is the correct position to hand, uh, to hold my gun and i need to start painting so this is how i need to paint uh, this object in the right way so now i'm taking it i can also walk towards the object because it has six of training i can uh, you know move around if i want to especially that is useful for 3d objects all right as i am done with this and i click on done i get a score card in front of me so i got three stars here and i have committed 22.92% error so this is the total time taken for me so this is a report card and after which uh, you know i can jump to either the new dexterity mode either i can select a new part or i can go back to home now let's go to the industrial use case after practicing uh, you know hours and hours on dexterity training once your hands are you know stable and you are certain that now you can paint an a real time uh, an object and you want to practice more in a workshop and on in an actual workshop you go to industrial use case here you select any of the industries that you want so you have automotive aerospace furniture shipyard and industrial let's go to automotive so this this space that you see is like an actual paint booth that is there uh, in an automotive company and there are these different options available so we have both for like two wheelers as well as four wheelers you get all these different part selection and for simplicity let's pick this front door now there are two ways uh, to use this object either i use it in a metal form or in a chalk uh, chalkboard form we have already seen the chalkboard form so let's go with the metal this time and there are these three different steps right so the first layer that is applied on on an any on any part is essentially primer after primer there is a uh, color layer, uh, layer and on top of that there is gloss so this is the first layer that we are applying which is primer for instance if i uh, spray a little too much on any like one particular space it will also show me at the end of the session we have done the we have completed the primer part now the second step is selecting the color so let's go for orange so this is 
the second layer of coating that we are applying. purposefully missing out on this part so that we will know that uh, you know the defects uh, that will show at the end of the session and this is the last step uh, in the painting process which is applying the gloss so I click on this This is the drip, which we also get to know, you know, after this step. I'll just apply a little more. And yeah, gloss is of the same color because it just gives the shine uh, to the color layer. So after clicking done, this is the report card, a detailed report card that I get which has like average distance, object uh, between you know, object and paint run, average angle speed, time taken, paint consume, paint to wastage, transfer efficiency. And for all of that, what is the ideal case, what are the passing scores and what is the my score. Plus now if we look at the object, as I was saying, there are certain areas where which were uncovered, right? So Actually, because I, uh, I also painted that gloss layer on that area, it is not coming as a permanent cover. But if I keep partially covered, so these are the areas which were only partially covered and not fully covered. Then there is dry spray. So because uh, the speed, like actually the distance was a little more than it should have been, that's why the whole spray paint is dry spray. And this is the rundown that I was talking about. Where I sprayed a little too much and it was drip, the paint was dripping there. So this is what it's showing. So yes, you get this detailed you know, report and the experience of painting in an actual paint environment. And then you can either you know, select a new part in the same industry or select a new industry or go back to home.